you start with this circle, right? And they give you some information that's on the diagram, but not very much. And then the rest of it's verbal. So the first thing I did, you can actually see it on my working here. The first thing I did was to try and combine those two together. So you've got this uh, chord that's been um, divided off. I think that's AB, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, you've got the center of the circle O. And then the rest of the information is provided verbally. So they say AB is a chord of length 6 through 3 centimeters. So that's me putting that in right there. Is that okay? What's the other piece of information they need to put on the diagram? I've got the radius. I've got the radius, right? So it's going to be here and here. They're both going to be six. And I know I need both because what's the question actually asking? What's, what do they want? Exactly. They want, okay, we're going to get to an area, but before that, before that, they want an angle, namely this guy here. Okay. Now think to your trigonometry decision tree, right? What are you going to use? What, and sp speak of the devil and she shall appear. I literally just said the words trigonometry decision tree. Okay. I heard it's the bat signal. Okay. Have a look. Have a look. You got three sides here in an angle. What is it? Cosine rule, right? So I'm going to write cos of AOB. Right? Now you have the cosine rule on your reference sheet. Right? This is the one where you've got a fraction on the right hand side. So I'm going to start to put in the pieces, right? There's going to be an a squared plus b squared, plus b squared, minus, c squared. minus c squared, divided by what? 2ab. So 2ab. Yep. Okay. Now, shh, this is an important point. Please have a look up at my working, and I'll just rub off the rest of this stuff because it's unnecessary. As, um, as was highlighted when we first looked at the trigonometry decision tree, right? The important thing with the cosine rule is that you know which side is which. A, B, and C are different because you do different things to them. How did I know that this is the C and not like one of these other ones? C is um, across from the A. Yeah, very good. It's opposite, right? Now, uh, you'll definitely get marks for working, but it depends on what kind of working you've got. Okay, now, shh, shh, shh. I'm going to teach you a little sneaky thing that comes up a lot. It's, a, it's kind of something I didn't realize until I started teaching it, right? You're going to use the cosine rule in circles just like this quite a bit. I want you to watch really carefully what I'm about to do. So just pens out of hands and have a look. Shh. One of the instincts that you will have, and I will put money on the table that 90% of you, if you got this far, you will do this on the next line. You'll just start expanding stuff, right? You'll be like 36, 36, whatever on earth that is, 2 times 36, and then off you go. Your numbers get big, you start cancelling stuff, fingers crossed. But I want you to look closer. There's something you can do that makes this faster and easier. You never need to touch a calculator. Watch this. See how there's a 6 squared there? Mm -hmm. And there's also a 6 squared there? And there's hiding a 6 squared there? And there's one last 6 squared down here. Do you notice that? Now this actually always happens in circles because of this radius business, right? So I can just cancel 6 squared from the top and from the bottom. Watch closely, this is what I end up with. That becomes a 1. That becomes a 1. This guy here becomes minus root 3 squared. Root 3 squared is just 3. And then I cancel the last 6 squared down the bottom. Look ma, no calculator, right? 2 minus 3, that's negative a half, okay? So I've got cos of AOB. Now I'm not quite finished yet, okay? Ashan, I'll come to your question in a second, I'm just mindful of time. Now, shh, shh, shh. I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you another trick. Can you reach your calculator there? Okay. Shh. Now, we discussed this exact idea yesterday. I know a lot of you feel comfortable in degrees. You feel comfortable in degrees. And you do a lot of work in degrees before you go to radians, okay? By the way, why am I talking about this? Why do I know I need to do radians? Have a look at the question. The question tells me, right? I read the question. Shh. You're 12. Show me you've got your calculator in hand, but I need your eyes up so that I know I have your attention. Thanks, Perry. Much appreciated. Okay. Watch carefully, here's how we're going to do this. I don't know if it will work on yours, Tyler. Like, I, I, it depends on what the calculator is, okay? Shh. Make sure you're in radians mode. Sorry. We're short on time. I want to use it well. Make sure you're in your radian mode, right? 
And then, this is cos of an angle. We actually just want the angle, right? So what you're going to need to do is say shift cos, and then you're going to put in negative a half or negative 0.5. Okay? Now, once you do that, predictably it will throw you back some decimal garbage, right? Because you're like, what is that? Now, why is there so much decimal stuff in here? And the answer is, we're talking in radians, so there's a pi hiding in this, right? It's like maybe it's pi on 2, or maybe it's like pi on 4, or something like that, right? Now, if there's going to be a pi hiding there, there's an easy way to get rid of the pi, which is, on your calculator, with the answer still there, please go and press divide by pi. Now if you do that, I hope you recognize the decimal that's staring back at you, or press the fraction button if you don't, it's telling you two thirds. But that's because you divided by pi. So if you put the pi back, there's your angle. Does that make sense? Now some of you of course will be like, I prefer degrees, if you did this in degree mode, it'll tell you 120 degrees, and then you can convert back. But like when the calculator can do it for you, why wouldn't you? Does that make sense? Okay.